I'm Kat. I'm Haley. And this is Night Classy, the podcast where two teachers unwind, sip wine, and discuss the topics we wish we could teach at school. What are we drinking, Haley? We are drinking Boda Box again. Same box as last week because it's a box. Yeah. <laughs> Lasts for a month. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it usually doesn't. No, it usually doesn't. <laughs> I don't really know how we're doing it this week. We've been really busy. I think there's been no yeah. time for fun. I, I was going to say, I've had a two like two small glasses of wine and I'm fucking lit and I think it's because I haven't <laughs> drank for a week <laughs> yeah. a whole week yeah that'll I'm that'll proud do of it me to you. Uh, yeah you are lit. I'm like halfway through my first one and uh <laughs> I wish I was at your level <laughs> because it looks very fun <laughs> it is fun um yeah so we haven't been drinking because we went back to work hey <laughs> love working making money making that bread bringing home the bacon yeah but I mean, we also uh, made the money and brought home the bacon when we weren't doing anything for like six months. I'm going to so. go, I'm going to say something controversial and say, oh, no. uh, that was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> doing nothing and getting paid is more fun than doing things yeah. and getting paid. I literally, Every time. <laughs> my skin on my stomach broke out in like this huge red rash today. And oh. I can't think of any reason for that besides I'm fucking stressed. It's stress. It's yeah. definitely stress. <laughs> and that's this thing on my forehead. Either it's more mm-hmm. ringworm <laughs> that we got from our freaking cats. Okay, <laughs> we are having we are having our own <laughs> pandemic in our house, and it's called ringworm, <laughs> or as Tommy and I call it, wigwam. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. We just say like stupid things. We say words wrong. You know, it's one of those cute things couples oh, do. You wouldn't understand. So cute. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm part of the least cute couple on the planet. No, just kidding. We're just cute. kidding. Just kidding. Just yeah. kidding. You just produce a podcast together. That's I know. fine. <laughs> it's cute. We even recorded our first date as if it were a podcast. Have so you guys that's pretty cute. To that? No, I'm scared because I was so nervous when we did that. I, it's probably really uncomfortable. Yeah, just for the audience. Yeah. I, Kat and I were messaging on Tinder and I was like, yeah, I have this podcast studio for our first date. You should just come meet me here and then we'll go out to a bar. So she showed up <laughs> and like, we were just like, let's roll. And we just recorded oh, our no, first date. You were like, let's roll. You're like, you oh, want to yeah. like put on headphones and try out the microphone. And I, I wasn't going to tell you no. So I was like, sure. And then you started recording <laughs> us and we had like a 30 minute conversation. Did you think it was cool? Oh yeah. I thought it was really cool. I mean, I just used Alec for access to the podcast. Yeah, studio, she's just so. sleeping with the producer. Just, yeah, so yeah. happened to work out. <laughs> but I will, <laughs> I will say that, like, we were messaging on Tinder right from the bat about podcasts, and I'm always stoked about podcasts. Yeah, your you first, to, you, your icebreaker to me was, what podcast do you listen to? Yeah, but people, the audience might not know this, but <laughs> Kat and I and Haley had established Night Classy within two days of me messaging cat on tinder well Haley and i had been talking about night classy not we didn't have a name for it yet but Mm -hmm. Haley and i have such good chemistry and like we always get into these like enthusiastic drunk conversations (laughs) and we're like we need a podcast and so then uh, we needed a podcast yeah and we're talking about it piece of the it was and then uh, i just happened to match with uh, alec yeah, it was perfect in Again, every way. Chicken and egg, and every- includes a podcast studio, <laughs> which came first. Yeah, yeah, but it's funny because Kat's <laughs> first text message to me is, "I got the domain," and that was yeah. I got the domain for Night Classy because yeah. we'd come up with the name. But Aww. I just don't think the audience knows that. Yeah, though. I don't think so either. That's like a little bit of backstory that you can impress your friends with. Just yeah. kidding. No one will be <laughs> impressed. I thought we had shared that before, but I, I guess think so. Not maybe yeah. Yeah. maybe in the first episode that never aired. <laughs> oh, maybe that is because I feel like I remember talking about how I'm like, yeah, we're like a tricycle. Like, <laughs> it's you guys are the two main wheels, and then I'm just the like random one in this podcast, <laughs> the jiggly one yeah, with the loose screw. <laughs> yeah, we're a three three wheeled cart, and I'm the fucked up wheel. No. no, I think Alec is the wheel in the front that like leads us and we're yeah. like the wheels in the back with the loose screws like jiggling That's around <laughs> yeah we're tottering yeah no, you two are the uh-huh. wheels and i'm like the seat oh and hmm. the person sitting on it no is our audience <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. Night Classy is a bicycle and Alec is like the steering wheel and we are the wheels. 
Okay. Yeah. I yeah. see. And speaking of Alec being the steering wheel, Alec is not only our producer, but an amazing podcast coach and consultant. And so today he was leading us through an exercise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this You can't make this up. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, the exercise was that you like create like the perfect podcast listener for your podcast. So like the demographic of person you are trying to appeal to, but like you make them one person and you choose all the traits they have and then like you craft your podcast for them. So we were saying things like, okay, she's about, it's a, a, a female, B, about 22 years old. Um, she's like just out of college. She's probably like, maybe she's becoming a teacher. She's Definitely maybe values education, values education. She's maybe like a little on the nerdier side. Cause we talk about all kinds of topics. And so our keywords were 22 <laughs> female teacher, nerdy in college shy and shy, and shy. not even college just shy <laughs> yeah because like I, I i feel like i'm kind of shy and i like listening to podcasts mm -hmm. where like people fill the space with their voices for me and so that those are our keywords and we typed it in to google to images google. <laughs> yeah so that we could see what our what our avatar typical looks like. yeah, <laughs> the exercise is that you find a picture of a person that you feel like is your listener yeah and then they're like a character in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're so like, then talk you, about them. You print yeah. out that picture and then you like make all your decisions based on, are we reaching her? Yeah. So we tried. <laughs> <laughs> we succeeded. In yeah. All oh, I think so too. <laughs> I think I actually found a new demographic that I'm now trying to appeal to. <laughs> um, it was all porn. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it, we didn't notice at first that it was porn. We were like looking like, we're, okay. Well, you were. The, yeah. The, so the, we couldn't see the screen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he pulls it up and Alec is like, oh, this is porn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so definitively. No, he, was like, he was like, there's porn on my screen. And I was oh, like, why? Yeah, <laughs> well, the thing what was, were we you saw, doing before we walked in? I saw In like, your office. So say there's like 40 pictures on the screen. I saw one boob down in the corner. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and then like as my eyes adjusted, every single picture was either the start or at some point in a porn. <laughs> yeah, it was either like straight up porn or it was subtle porn, where it was like like teacher type yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was all classroom porn. <laughs> yeah, which is which is not not us. appropriate. Yeah. FYI, <laughs> that is not what we do. No. We are we are licensed teachers. Right. No, and if yes. that is you as our listener, oh, great. Great. Not what we expected, I support though, it in Google. If you have any questions trying to make your outfit authentic, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. Just get go all to my Goodwill. clothes from Express <laughs> on sale. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> This is a sex positive podcast, <laughs> yeah. but our listener is not a girl in a Catholic school outfit. Getting <laughs> fucked by over. her professor. <laughs> <laughs> or is she? Let us know. Let write us. us. Know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you are. I don't know. Let us yeah, let us know. We we do need to like do some kind of a survey where like you guys write in, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. Because we wanna know we wanna know what you're like. We wanna build our perfect avatar. Get to know you. Yes. Yeah. We think you're twenty two. We think you're an education or a student and you're female. That's about yeah. all we know. And yeah. And I think we also have like a few like alternative listeners, like kind of like into like witchy stuff. I've noticed mm -hmm. that a little bit, which yeah. is really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of lots of really cool people. We love we like anyone who reaches out to us or donates on Patreon. Like we heavily stock you. Oh, also very liberal. That's that's a keyword we forgot. But good. Good times. Yep. We we are noticing you. <laughs> <laughs> we see you. We love interacting yeah. with you. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, it's it's cool. Oh, so we are we were nominated for Best Memphis Podcast. How did we not lead in with that? I know. It's like I forgot. <laughs> I'm so excited. I blocked it out. <laughs> <laughs> it causes so much stress. I blocked it out yeah. of my brain. <laughs> So please vote for us is it's what I'm trying to say. So easy. And thank you for all of those who wrote in to get us nominated. Yeah. And we're on the ballot now. So practice for November. 
and vote. Yeah, it's good practice. Yeah. Yeah, and it only good. takes like 30 seconds and it's going to ask for your zip code. A lot of people have wondered if they need a Memphis zip code for it to work. You do not. And it's not like an invasion of your privacy. It's just a local magazine that's running this campaign. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Sweet. Good to know. Thank you. Definitely good. So please vote for us. The link will be in the show notes. It will also be posted on our Instagram and the link in our bio. And I had a lot of trouble voting on my phone. I wasn't able to, and I don't know if others are experiencing the same thing, but if you struggle voting on your phone, if you vote in your browser instead, it's a lot easier. Not that voting on your phone is hard, but for some reason it wasn't yeah, working Yeah, I struggled with it too. I had to use a different email. Yeah, really? <laughs> we just need the clout. <laughs> yeah please give us we, the clout we need recognition we need attention <laughs> yeah give us feed our incessant need for attention please right the only reason strong i became a teacher is so i could have all eyes on me yeah it's the like whole day your own little soapbox all and then day i realized they don't do that kids yeah, don't do there that. are no eyes on you <laughs> none <laughs> literally they want to do literally everything else <laughs> but watch you so you got to be extra engaging like right. we are like we are, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. so that's that on that. We also have uh, some new Patreon donors. Woo! Woo! Thank you. I want to shout out my very own grandma. Yes. Her name is Linda Barnhart. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> Thank you, Grandma Barnhart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that, Grandma, for the win. Yeah. I'm going to shout out our other newest Patreon, Ray Ann from Griffin, Georgia. And so this is really cool because she donated at the level where she actually gets to pick one of our lesson topics. Yes. And we're so excited. Um, we're not going to reveal it, but let's just say I don't think we would have ever even stumbled upon this topic for a lesson on our own <laughs> no but it's it's like perfect and like Alex said like it somehow like fits into what we normally choose perfectly but it's something Haley and I never in a million years would have thought of right but yeah. we're very excited yeah, to do with a very specific it. fandom that mm. I don't participate in but <laughs> appreciate right <laughs> right and so also in addition to her super cool topic request we're giving a shout out to her cats uh Dasha or Dasha Daisha, Daisha, Dasha, Dasha. I don't know Daisha. how you pronounce it. And Garfunkel, her <laughs> other cat. Um, and apparently they love hearing about our cats, Ghost, Ernie, and Safty. Yeah. So maybe we should have a little play date soon. Oh, that would be fun. Georgia's yeah. not too far away. No, it's not. It's yeah. not far at all. Do drive a little bit over to Georgia. <laughs> we can do lesson plans because she's also a teacher. Yeah. Um, and then the cats can play. So that'd be fun. That could be great. Also, I don't know if Georgia's far away. I just feel like even though I've lived in the South for a year now, I still feel like all of the South is one place. It is. I don't know if other people feel that way, but <laughs> it's the North versus the South and that's all you need to know. <laughs> like I just like sent, I had a friend from high school who just started listening to the podcast. Hey McKenna. And she now lives in South Carolina and mm -hmm. I was sending her mail today and I was like, thinking like, oh, we should hang out. But South Carolina is really <laughs> yeah, far <it's> far. <laughs> <laughs> but Georgia is actually close. It's connected to Tennessee. Oh, and cool. And like from us, Atlanta is five hours. So even closer oh. than like Cincinnati. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have so thought? Who would have known? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was some gram or graph. Some I know. Gram, some, 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 some graph where you can see geologically, <laughs> geographically, Geo geographically, <laughs> where Geo things Geo are. Geographically. I don't know. <laughs> Geo accurately. Geo where are things? Where are things? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but yeah maybe maybe we need to go back and take geography I've never taken a geography class in my life but I was also a history major so I guess I saw the world but not really geography was built into history for us not me I don't know where anything is well, sorry <laughs> about your poor education. I mean, I, I guess I do know where things are. What if I did a whole... For the people, that, like Alex family listens and like my grandmas listen and like I just always feel like I don't want to seem too dumb. You but, need to worry about the people who don't know you. That's <laughs> because true. the people who do know you know that you're intelligent. But. Yeah, <laughs> but, but also the South is all one place. Don't 
don't at me about it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was, dang it. I was going to say something funny. Oh yeah. What if I did a lesson where it was all on like maps and it was something you had to like see physically and it was just like, a I total would flop. murder you. <laughs> we were just talking about how like thankful that like the three of us all take night classy seriously. And I take it seriously enough that if you did a lesson like that, I would make you redo it. You need to do a bunch of research all over again and right. fix it. <laughs> I don't even know what the lesson would be on for it to be like, all visual. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna troll so you angry. so hard next lesson. I just having to keep cutting, and I'm like, uh, "Can you describe that?" Yeah, cut? we'll post on Instagram, and then never do right, <laughs> like you always do to my lesson. I'm sorry. I. I'm okay. just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with that. Those, those fucking like memes about alcohol. I was like posting yeah, the like. Yeah, you never posted those. I did. Are you oh, kidding? I did. I and you I said you didn't. And they like messed up our Instagram grid and I was pissed about it, but I still oh. did it. They were so funny though. <laughs> they yeah, were funny, you. but they looked whack on I made grid. another meme recently, actually. I don't know if okay. you guys want to see it. Do you want to see later. it? Alec made a funny meme today too. But it was about me, so maybe that's why I think it's funny. <laughs> well, here's my meme. Um, it used to say, <laughs> it used to a say funny kids meme. instead of cat. My cat while I'm trying to eat. And it's like pictures of... Of people hugging Jesus. Judas, like kissing Jesus' face. <laughs> that's so true. Our cats are the biggest whores for food. It's crazy. Yeah. They they're just, starving they just love the it. Time. They act like they're starving, but they're yeah, not. They're really not. We like yeah. literally calculate their calories. Yeah. With a calculator. And just real quick. <laughs> not on paper. <laughs> Don't know how to do that. I'm a sixth grade math teacher, but who knows how to do that? Before we leave Rayanne, I just wanted to say the message she sent us on Patreon was like so sweet. Oh, yeah. And so thoughtful. And it just like made all three of our days when we read it. So I just wanted to thank you, Rayanne, not only for being a Patreon, but for that really nice message. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Rayanne. Definitely. Thank you so much. Other than that, do you have anything else? No. Like we said at the top <laughs> of this lesson, we are back in school. Yeah. So pray for us. So life is hard. Send good thoughts. Life um, is, yeah. It's really hard to do things after not doing things. Also, uh, in we need to like re, uh, what do they say? Like recreate the wheel for online school. Reinvent. Reinvent the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was so excited to start this school year because I'm like, oh man, I already have all my lesson plans. I already have all my PowerPoints. And now it's all online and uh, the internet is difficult to deal with. We're all trying to learn Microsoft Teams. I've never been so stressed out in my entire life, I think. I think one of the only worst situations is for this to be like your first year teaching. True. So if you're having to teach virtually your first year, shout out, good luck. Um, we're all in it together. Peace be with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, but we'll yeah, see. That, so, is, that is tough. Please know we're still working on night classy very hard. As we record right now, this is a work night. So mm -hmm. uh, things are... Uh, we're drinking on a work night for you. Yeah. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> things are not easy for us right now is what we're trying to say. But we love it. Yeah, we do <laughs> love it. I was up from like 2 a.m. until like... 4 or 5 a.m. last night. Yeah. Just like thinking about things and stressing and cleaning stressing. up cat puke and just it's my life now. Um. So Haley, I can help you a little bit. You can? If you're stressed. I can. <gasps> so I blew on the breathalyzer higher than Haley. I blew a 0 0.138 and she blew a 0 0.11. So I go first and I think this is the perfect time for me to go first because... I am talking about stress and stress management. Ooh, we need it for sure. Yeah, Should we share we our theme? Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about our theme. Okay, share our theme. <laughs> so our theme, since we're going back to school, it's back to school. So um, we'll see with my lesson. But as we have revealed already, Cats is all about stress relief, which we definitely need yes. going back to school. Yes. Back to you, Kat. Um, so we are not only starting school, but starting school in a fucking pandemic. <laughs> Some of us are going back to school in person and are worried about getting sick and getting their loved ones sick and social distancing their freaking students, which I don't even know how that's possible. Impossible. Impossible. Also, some of us are going back to school online, which is 
all so stressful. And while I'm grateful to be going back online and not in person due to the pandemic, it is still a lot of work. It is stress for teachers, stress for parents, stress for students, stress for janitorial staff and lunchroom staff and absolutely everyone involved. We are all stressed. And also, even if you're not working in a school, you're probably stressed right now too at your normal job, either working from home. Maybe you're not because working from home is pretty cool, but yeah, it was pretty chill, (laughs) but maybe you're stressed. I don't know. Also, we are in a pandemic and a global recession, so that's a lot to be stressed about. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm talking about stress management. My sources are Oprah.com, the ASCO Post, Harvard Health Publishing, Healthline.com, Quora, Psychology Today, GoodRx.com, DrugScience.com, RyanandPeters.com, and VillageRockShop.com. Awesome. You know that (laughs) Nicki Minaj song where the lyrics are like, no, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. Yeah. Yes. Teachers right now be like, no, I'm not. Uh, lucky, <laughs> I'm stressed. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, no, I am lucky still, but right. um, stress is on 10. Stress is on a million. <laughs> so uh, even before this, I freaking live for stress management. <laughs> I thought you were going to say stress. <laughs> I feel like it no, motivates me. <laughs> I hate stress. I am type B, Enneagram 7 all the way. Like I normally don't feel stress. Yeah, but like, you're cool I, as a cucumber. <laughs> but I also like love self care and love sleeping. So I have a lot of like de stressing routines. So uh, every night I have a, a de stress routine. And I start by making chamomile tea. My favorite type of tea is Yogi brand, and it's the sleepy time tea, and it has chamomile and lavender. Ooh. Then I take it to my bed, and I get in bed, and I start drinking my tea. I also spray my pillows with pillow spray, some aromatherapy. I didn't get know that, that was a thing. Get that lavender spray in your pillows, girl. Where does one find pillow spray? Um, um, I don't know. My mom's always given it to me. Uh, the only pillow spray I've ever had to use was when I had bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> um, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure you can find it somewhere, but I, there are two types of girls in this world. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Um, I can't, I can't help you with bed bugs. I can't help you with where to find pillow spray. <laughs> Um, oh god now i feel bad for you but yeah well don't buy wooden bed frames or not not even buy don't get free wooden bed frames from craigslist that's all i'm gonna say yeah i i think you deserve bed bugs for that one they had to come twice the exterminators had to come like i i went to bed one night and woke up the next day with 60 at least 60 bites on me oh my god it i didn't was, know this it was awful a very stressful event (laughs) i wish i would have had some lavender up in that i cannot believe that (laughs) i could not either okay so um don't buy bed frames don't buy wooden bed frames from from the side of the road okay so (laughs) not that there's any like i get stuff from the side of the road all the time but be careful you just check it out check it for bugs just check for bugs (laughs) So I spray my pillows. I also go the extra mile with aromatherapy, put some essential oil rolly, like de-stress stuff on my wrists and temples. I take melatonin and valerian root. And if you don't know, valerian root smells really fucking bad. Like Alec winces every time I open the jar and he says it smells like butthole. But (laughs) that's like my acne medication. I started taking it like two weeks ago and I'm like, Tommy, smell this. And it smells awful. Yeah. That's weird. The acne medication smells bad. I wonder what's in it. To describe it. Yeah. Mm. But valerian root smells horrible. It smells like really like gross socks. Sounds like, like something from Game of Thrones. Val- well, Valeria Valerian. is a place, Valerian. and Valerian steel. Hey, that yeah. must be why. Yeah, <laughs> because it is the exact because same is, thing. It is from Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, so, and uh, so then, uh, then I do these things, and then I drink my tea in bed and hang out with Alec. We usually watch something like kind of monotone and chill, like Forensic Files or Jeopardy. <laughs> so no more scaly, <laughs> scaly, scary alien in the night deals. Well. I like to watch Forensic Files, which I guess you could argue is scary. And Alec 
doesn't like to watch it because you I get think it's scared. Perfect. It like is. You can just tune it out, and yeah. he's so monotone. Exactly. Like you can fall asleep to it because like it doesn't really change. You know, like yeah. the inflection of there's the voice. There's not like a ah. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing really. So. Like, I don't want to watch anything new or that, like, stimulates my brain too much. Okay, okay. but can I say this? <laughs> Last night, the Forensics Files was <laughs> a woman who was, her skull was beaten in with a hammer in okay. her living room, and her husband watched and called the cops. And Kat's like, okay, I'm going to bed and puts her mask on and rolls over. And <laughs> oh, I yeah, sit I there, also like, wear a sleep mask. With... The, yeah, you're extra. Yeah. So there's the reenactment of just bashing her skull in, <laughs> in her own house. Well, I and slept I was like just a like, baby. I always get left so with that these woman. traumatic reenactments. I'm like, this isn't part of my wind down routine. <laughs> well, then you changed what did you it. What did you, it what did you watch after? Oh, it's on Netflix. No. What like device do you watch it on? Our laptop. laptop. Where do you put the laptop? On well, I put it on my lap until I'm too tired to hold it, and then I put it on Alex's lap. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, but he can turn it off. Like once I take it off my lap, it's fair game. I'm falling asleep. If you want to put it away, you can. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's what I'm saying. You're cool as a cucumber. Just like yeah, she got her head bashed in. So. I'm not going to lose sleep about it. I mean, it yeah. already happened. And, so. and then there's me who's like, I have to know what happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah. Now, okay. for someone like me who's seen all like, what, hundreds of episodes of Forensic Files, like multiple times, mm-hmm. it's like nothing is new anymore. Yeah. So you just need to watch all of them. And like <laughs> Netflix only has so many episodes of Jeopardy. So you got to move on at some point. Yeah. Okay. So we need to get into the meat of this. Yeah. So I have a routine. My routine makes me feel good. It like puts my brain into a state where I can uh, let go of my stress a little bit, you know? Yeah. And so uh, actually, no, I don't know what it's like to let go of stress. Well, if you, if you have a routine where every day you're doing this routine in order to let go of your stress, it'll train your brain to be like, okay, this is me time. I do this every day and this is a stress-free zone. I don't look at work emails. I don't pick up the phone if anyone calls me. This is going to bedtime. And I think establishing that routine is valuable in terms of going to bed. Like, I mean, I still definitely have those nights where I can't stop stressing out and I stay up all night. But like having this routine at least minimizes those nights for me. And like, I'm sure it doesn't work for everyone, but it works for me. And so first of all, let's talk about stress a little bit because stress is actually really dangerous. So stress is basically your brain reacting to a flight, flight or freeze situation where whether the threat is real or perceived, your brain is reacting the same way. This basically triggers your adrenal gland to release hormones, which includes adrenaline and cortisol, which increases your heart rate and blood pressure. And now like our stress might be, oh, I have to take this test in the morning or I have all this stuff to do for work. But your brain is basically reacting to that, releasing the same hormones as it would if like we were back in the caveman days and you were being stalked by a saber toothed tiger. Yeah. Our stresses are just different now. Yeah. Same response. So, and is it's so crazy to me, especially like in college studying how just like the chemical reactions in your brain can make you feel things physically, mm-hmm. like the physical emotions of stress can also be interpreted as like excitement. You know, your heart is pounding, your yeah. palms are sweaty. Is it excitement? Is it stress? There's so much that is like similar, but it's just the interpretation and circumstances. It can be really good if you're excited or maybe you're stressed about one thing and that like encourages you to like stop procrastinating and study or run away from an attacker. That is when stress is healthy. But many of us live in a constant and prolonged state of stress, which means your body rarely, if ever, stops producing these extra stress hormones. And that can be detrimental. Stress literally kills. Stress can increase your risk of depression, hypertension, and possibly some cancers. Some other things it can do is, like you said, your body reacts physically. So a lot of people, including me, I get an, an upset stomach when I'm stressed, mm. like really bad. I can't eat. I can't keep food down when I do eat. And 
According to the American Psychological Association, 25% of people say stress gives them an upset stomach. And this is because prolonged stress slows down digestion because your nervous system is directing all of its energy toward your most vital organs, like your heart and brain and lungs. Mm -hmm. And so it's not helping your body digest your food. And so this can cause nausea, constipation, cramping, and bloating. Yeah. And there's so much like science on this, obviously, but it just makes me think of children growing Mm -hmm. up in stressful environments and how that affects them for life. These like adverse child experiences that like look them up if you've never heard of oh, this. Oh yeah, ACEs. And it affects your brain. Yeah. Like it mm-hmm. makes you uh, it makes you act out in like an abnormal way because you're like there are parts of your brains that don't develop properly if you're right. under a constant state of stress. You don't know how to cope, you don't know what's coming next. Like you can't thrive if you're just Mm -hmm. trying to survive. That's right. And that leads me to my next point, which is memory loss. So high levels of stress hormones can damage or or shrink the hippocampus. And this results in cognitive impairment. And it can be mild in adults, but for a child, it's it can be truly detrimental and affect their social skills and memory long term. Stress can also increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. And it can cause fertility issues as stress may suppress ovulation. A study found that women undergoing IVF were 2.6 times more likely to get pregnant if they also took a course on stress management, which is a lot. That's insane, actually. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah. And that just goes to show like, yeah, a flower's not going to grow if you you can't water it. Right. And like, it probably goes back to evolution. Like if you're under constant stress, you don't want to bring a baby into that. Yeah. Yeah. Low chance of survival and Mm -hmm. uh, just bad situation. It's a bad sitch. It's a bad sitch all around. Just just relax. (laughs) Chill out. (laughs) So the point is you can't chill out that easily. And also, Haley, I hope you're trying to get pregnant because I'm about to help you lower your stress so that you can achieve your goals. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll keep you posted. (laughs) I'm not, for the record. I'm not trying. (laughs) Please don't wish that on me. I'm not ready. (laughs) Yeah, there's too much stress happening right now. (laughs) Yeah, this is any of that. This is a hazardous work zone. (laughs) Yeah. You don't a baby wants no part of what's happening right now in our house. Yeah, you go for it. (laughs) We should we should have never gotten the cats fixed because we could have had more kittens. That would have been the perfect baby fix. Hmm. I mean we can always adopt more kittens though. That's true. There's always going to be more. I guess that is true. I would have never thought of that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, okay. (laughs) Okay. We all know the basic bitch ways of relieving stress. We know that you can exercise to relieve stress. We know that limiting your caffeine intake, journaling, meditation, going to bed on time, those things all relieve stress. Okay, wait. So there are like different <laughs> levels here. It's like no stress relief is what? And then all these like normal things are basic bitch level. Are you going to give us like goddess level? Okay, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not saying that my <laughs> strategies are going to help you more. If anything, they'll probably help less. <laughs> But like, I just didn't want to give a boring lecture. So we're not talking about the things that everyone knows about. And if you didn't know, I just listed them. So you're welcome. Exercise yeah, you more. Go, go, on a, go on a fucking jog. I don't care. So, <laughs> so uh, what's I'm, that like, Kat? <laughs> going on a jog? I, Does it help you? <laughs> I would not know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get into it. So I compiled in a list of uh, stress exercises that I'm going to recommend. Oh. And so Haley... Everyone likes to watch The Office a thousand times over and over again. Yeah. And I know you do that. We all do that to release our stress. But do you know why it helps us? Yeah, I think I do. Um, It gives us kind of like a routine to fall into and it fills this like space for us and kind of lets our brain check out while we do the minuscule things in life, like washing our face and brushing our teeth. That doesn't really give our brain like the actual downtime it needs, though. Yeah, it gives your brain downtime because it's something that's predictable. And when you're living in an unpredictable world and all of that is causing you stress, <laughs> watching a show you've already seen is something you know what's going to happen. Right. It's there reliable. are no surprises. You can, like you said, let your brain shut off. And but do would these you things. say that it gives like the proper, the proper downtime that your brain needs? 
because the way I see it is that it kind of blocks my brain from being able to like actually relax and go into relaxation modes before sleep, like still having something there. I'm not saying before sleep. Okay. I'm saying that watching the office versus a show you've never seen. Okay. The office is going to be a a better way to de-stress. You don't have to be on guard and pay attention so hard. It's not, it's not stimulating your brain. Okay. This is something reliable and not only is it reliable, but a lot of people like to do this with especially sitcoms. Like when I'm stressed, I a rewatch shows I've already seen, and b like they're always sitcoms. Like I like The <laughs> Office, Parks and Rec, right. New Girl, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like, what does it say about me that I only rewatch sitcoms? <laughs> no, and I think that's common. <laughs> that's common with a lot of people because the thing about sitcoms is they're always positive. When a bad thing happens, it's a mildly bad thing and it gets resolved usually before the end of the episode. Oh my gosh, that's so funny because I will find myself in like whether it's in TV shows or watching movies, like getting stressed out at the stressful moments and being like, wait, this is a cinematic thing. Like it's all going to be okay, Haley. Just relax. Exactly. (laughs) Like you, you pick up on the stress of the TV shows you're watching. And that's literally why I haven't watched Breaking Bad yet is because I've tried watching it and I get so stressed out and my heart literally starts pounding. And like when I watch TV, I'm trying to relax relax and de-stress and that's why I can't watch yeah. dramas like that breaking bad is very stressful it is it's stressful. worth it though so is weeds like weeds is like a dark oh comedy my God. but it still yes. fucking stresses me out love weeds anyway love it but can't watch it <laughs> same with oh god what is the shameless love oh shameless my God, I love have a shameless. really hard time watching it it just yeah. gets too stressful I haven't seen like any of the latest ones for that reason yeah. I like I stopped watching it Yeah, me too. So another way to uh, de-stress is you can wash dishes. Oh, yeah. So according to joy. (laughs) So according to a study of 51 participants by the Florida State University, participants who practice mindfulness while watching dishes. So they practice mindfulness while washing dishes by focusing on the smell of the soap, the temperature of the water the feeling of the dishes. They reported a decrease in nervous or nervousness by 27%. Wow. Yeah. And that's just like really rewiring your brain. Yeah. Because to me, I'm like, God, that sounds boring. If I'm being honest, like focusing on those things. But when you actually do things like that and are really mindful about what you're doing and experiencing and sensing, you do feel relaxed. Exactly. And I think that's why a lot of people don't meditate is because sitting there doing nothing, like for some people that's boring, but you can meditate while you're doing something that needs to be done anyway, like laundry, dishes, vacuuming, as long as you're being mindful while you're doing it. So for me, laundry is the same way that this study on dishes is when I fold laundry, I fold in a very deliberate way and it's meditation for me. Mm -hmm. And so you can meditate that Marie Kondo, that Marie Kondo fold. So you can meditate while doing something productive. Like meditation doesn't have to be this thing where you like set a time, like set aside time to do nothing. You can do things while you meditate, which is really cool. Yeah. Never thought about it like that. You can also take supplements to ease your stress. So I already said that I take valerian root and valerian root is a supplement suggested to reduce stress. And so I looked into it a little more. So of course we have to be cautious when talking about dietary supplements because there have not been very many study, like very many medical studies to support concrete claims on their effects. There are so many dietary supplements and dietary supplements are a thing of like, like they're pretty new, but we're going to look at the data that we do have. So a review of 16 studies of 1,093 patients found that six of those 16 studies reported a statistically significant benefit in improving quality of sleep with valerian root. Okay. So that's not a lot, but it is some. Six out of 16 Six with 1,600 something total participants. Yes. I wonder how many participants out of that number. Yeah. So <laughs> not the best, but it is. Check your some. sources, kids. <laughs> oh, yes. Check your sources. Look at the information. We'll get into that in a little bit. But other studies have indicated that 
quote, constituents in valerian bind to neurotransmitter receptors that are implicated in circadian rhythms. Oh my God. <laughs> circadian rhythms and anxiety, end quote. <laughs> so studies have shown that valerian may also have antidepressant effects as it has increased no norepinephrine and dopamine levels in rodent studies so mm -hmm. it has increased those things in rodents which is cool and it can probably do that in us too so <laughs> i'm just picturing a little rodent like sitting on a stool wearing glasses filling out a little survey about their stress <laughs> levels no uh, they they look in their brains <laughs> yeah and they, yeah <laughs> alex's they sister probably does take that. blood too. Yeah, she doesn't study obviously dietary supplements, but she dissects rodents' brains all day, which is kind of so kind of cool. cool. Shout out Cam. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and if she was here, she would just be like, just so you know, like this isn't FDA approved. Oh, I'm I'm gonna say okay. That. Okay. <laughs> I was like, if I was listening to this, I would be like freaking out. So. Oh, I which is why I'm gonna talk about okay. that. <laughs> so other supplements listed that supposedly reduce stress include lemon balm, omega three fatty acids, ashwagandha. <laughs> Um, fatty asses, you said. <laughs> you heard it here I mean, first. Uh, <laughs> fat ass. We'll relieve that stress fatty, real quick. Uh, fatty asses <laughs> probably do relieve stress. We're doctors. Yeah. <laughs> Not officially, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> you said it so matter of factly. Fatty asses. I mean, I they probably do. Your, uh, what was thighs. Wrong? Thick thighs save lives. Okay, 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 okay. Listen to what I have to say. There's a lot. She's stressed. We She's stressed. stressed. Somebody, Somebody get us some valerian asses. Flight, fight, freeze. I still have a lot to get through, and you guys are laughing at me, and I don't appreciate it. Okay. So... Uh, again, <laughs> supplements that supposedly reduce stress include omega-3 fatty acids, ashwagandha, kava kava, and vitamin B. I do want to note that supplements can be great, but I want to caution people about just putting random supplements in their body. Most are not recommended or regulated by the FDA and have not been studied thoroughly. Also, things that are regulated and approved by the FDA are questionable. Okay. Still do your research. Yes. That's the topic for another we'll time. We'll keep though. talking about research. Thank you, Haley. Capsules <laughs> of supplements, while containing the same number of milligrams in every capsule, may have different concentrations of active chemicals, which can make them dangerous because a lot of dietary supplements come from plants. And in any given plant, a leaf may have a different concentration of a certain chemical than other leaves. So you do have to be really careful. And I love dietary supplements and as an active supplement user I really encourage you to do a lot of research into any supplement before you take it and also use a high quality supplement don't just buy whatever the grocery store sells you make sure you are talking to a naturopath and getting good quality supplements a lot of good quality supplements only come in oil form not essential oils that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about dietary supplements so try to get them from a good good source so that you know the concentration of the active chemicals. Also, when you're doing your research, don't just look at blogs, look at actual peer-reviewed scientific studies. And just because it's natural does not make it safe. There can be serious side effects even with natural dietary supplements. For example, I used St. John's wort like for an entire year because it had mood boosting properties. And I got high quality St. John's wort. I really think it worked. Wait, what is it? It's called St. John's wort. It's a wort. wort. It's a plant and it's a dietary supplement. And I used it for ages and it I think it really helped with my like mild seasonal depression. But I didn't realize that it also like vastly decreases the effects of hormonal birth control. So Ooh. so that's a that's a big consequence of your actions. Have I a little oopsie baby call him St. Yeah. John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so thankfully I did not like have an accidental pregnancy. Not that that's like a, necessarily for everyone a bad thing, but like it wasn't like you never want something that's you might not want something that's not intentional. So 
I would say luckily that didn't happen to me, but it could have because I did not properly look into the side effects. So before you take a supplement, do your research is all that I am saying. Aside from that, (laughs) (laughs) sorry to lecture you guys, but just had to say it like Alec told me and I was going to, I just didn't get to it yet. Um, Fight, (laughs) fight. (laughs) Right. <laughs> on air. <laughs> <clears throat> While we are on the topic of supplements, I want to talk about another kind of supplement, which is CBD. Oh, nice. So uh, it seems like uh, to me, like CBD is always talked about as a cure for everything. Seems like people always want to like say like, oh, if you have pain, like use CBD. Mm-hmm. If you're anxious or have mild depression, like try CBD. Yeah. Well, Seizures, you can get try st- CBD. You can get stuff for that like in the freaking gas stations yeah. now. Like everyone just loves CBD, but I don't, I didn't understand how it worked. So I did a little bit of research. So CBD stands for cannabidiol, which is the second most prevalent active ingredient in marijuana. The legal for I'm sorry, for legal reasons, CBD on the U.S. market is usually derived from hemp plants, not marijuana plants, and by itself does not cause any high, no matter which plant it comes from. And so CBD, like I said, is touted as a treatment for a lot of things. But there is the strongest scientific evidence to suggest that it really helps for treating childhood epilepsy. Hmm. And it can also, when applied to skin, help treat chronic pain and inflammation. And for our purposes, it is also used to treat stress, anxiety, and insomnia. And unfortunately, it is not known exactly how CBD works to reduce anxiety, but studies have shown over and over again that it does help. A 2015 review reported that 49 studies had results that, quote, strongly supported CBD as a treatment for generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And again, I am not recommending that if you have any of these disorders or think you do, you just like go take CBD, please see a doctor. But it, there are studies that show that it can help with these things. And a 2019 study used CBD on people struggling with sleep and anxiety and reported that it improved anxiety symptoms in 80% of patients and improved sleep in about 70%. Wow. So that's, that's a lot. Are, yeah, those are really good results. And But like I said, we don't know a whole lot about how CBD works, but there are some theories. So it is believed that CBD works because of how it interacts with the human body's endocannabinoid system. And so basically this system works to maintain homeostasis in the body. It regulates things like mood, sleep, immune function, reproduction, stress, metabolism, and appetite. Basically everything you need to survive. Yeah, that about does it for me as far as survival goes. (laughs) That's all you need. (laughs) The system works by binding endocannabinoids like like CBD, because it is one, to certain receptors. And this in turn signals the nervous system to take action and stabilize systems in health, of health and wellness. So then taking CBD kind of just like tells your body to stabilize and return to a point of homeostasis where like ideally it would be. Right. Because like it's we like said. like bring it in everybody. Yeah, bring it in. Like we said, like stress is like when you're stressed, you're reducing like extra of these chemicals. Mm-hmm. And then like homeostasis kind of says like, okay, we don't need to be like uh, putting out all these chemicals. We just can, relax. We can just relax. <laughs> and so for now, this is more of a theory, but use of commercial CBD is very new and it still needs to be extensively studied. But studies so far do say that it is good for that. But again, we don't know the long-term health risks mm-hmm. and we also don't know exactly how it works. So it can be maybe a little risky. I did use someone uh, back in college. I forget who it was, but I had some headaches and I was at work and I used someone's CBD oil. I just held it. I held it under my tongue and it helped. Like I used it multiple times yeah. and yeah, it was great. Yeah, it can. Uh, allegedly, it can help. 
Right. Which is really Stay cool. tuned for actual, you know, official. Yeah. We'll wait for <laughs> the scientists. Yeah. <laughs> science is real. Yes. <laughs> Still. <laughs> and uh, while we're on the topic of science, there is a Wiccan spell to reduce your stress. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Let's get down to it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm sure like if you're listening and you're Wiccan, I'm sure there are a ton of spells to reduce your stress. But I just looked at the first one that came up on Google. So here we go. <laughs> for this spell, you will need two blue candles, a Palo Santo stick, a fireproof dish, white paper, and a blue pen. No crystals? No crystals, Hmm. but we'll get to that. Okay. And so (laughs) Alec just put his face or his hand toward his face and I thought he was like doing it in disdain but I think do you was- have a jade face roller I have a rose quartz face roller okay but you have a face <laughs> roller yes <laughs> do you like it um I never really use it honestly I oh. bought it as an impulse buy at TJ Maxx so I've been <laughs> thinking about getting one okay well if you want you can have mine I never use it okay I'll take it <laughs> okay. anyway back to the look and stuff. <laughs> So you need the things I just said. And what you'll do is you'll light the candles and the Palo Santo stick and recite the following spell. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm just like wishing you would say like some like lyrics to, I don't know, some song like really offbeat or something. Like like the iCarly. (laughs) That's where mine went. I'm like, what if I just started like singing the iCarly theme song? (laughs) (laughs) That'd be be really funny. I don't even remember how it goes, but. Me either, but. (laughs) But we're going to reset the actual spell. So it goes, be gone from me, worry and woe. I have the strength to break free and the wisdom to know. As I breathe the sacred smoke, my calm will grow. I call upon my inner guide to help me take it slow. My serenity and tranquility will overflow with harm to none. Bless it. Blessings. Blessed be. (laughs) Blessings to all. (laughs) <laughs> so then you recite that spell three times while the candles and the Palo Santo stick burn and you inhale deeply 10 times. Then you pass the pen and paper through the smoke of the Palo Santo and then you need to meditate on your intuition and really embrace and trust your intuition. So whatever your gut is telling you, you need to embrace that. And then you write down whatever is on top of mind, top of heart while thinking about your intuition. What do you think will happen? How do you think things will turn out? And uh, apparently if you feel a tingling sensation on the top of your head, that's a really good sign. And then you continue meditating and you focus on your inner truth and you kind of focus on letting your inner truth, your intuition lead you out of your stress. And you imagine letting go of anything you don't truly care about. And then you read over what you wrote on the paper. Then you extinguish the candles in the Palo Santo. And then you have that piece of paper about your intuition and your good state of mind. And you can read back over that paper whenever you need to, whenever you start feeling stressed. And it'll help ground you. So a lot of times when I'm feeling stressed... I I just have all these like panic attacks and like, oh, like this is the worst case scenario. But my intuition tells me that everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And these these worries are the worst case scenario. And the likelihood of them happening is like slim to none. Right. It's so important to remind ourselves of that. Like our our worries are the worst case scenario. Like, yeah, I we need to retrain our brains to think like, what's the best case scenario? Exactly. And I think that's what this exercise is trying to teach you to do. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really just retraining your brain and meditating on the positive. Yes. And I think that's really valuable. And another witchy thing you can do is use crystals like Haley mentioned. Bring your crystals, bitch. Bring your crystals. We're going witching. We are going witching. So some crystals that are said to reduce stress are amethyst, which dispels negati- negativity <laughs> and attracts positive vibes. Blue lace agate, which helps you overcome communication issues and misunderstandings, as well as peace, tranquility, and eases tension. Rose quartz, which can balance your emotions and keep you centered. And for all the people rolling their eyes right now, Alec... There is scientific evidence that crystals can oh help God. stress Don't because the placebo effect is very powerful. Oh, <laughs> okay. So they're effective because they're not A effective. Brain switch over here. <laughs> so um, I'm getting so stressed out listening to this episode. <laughs> 
So the placebo effect can be 50% as strong as the real drug for reducing pain, according to some studies by Harvard. So if you believe crystals are helping you, they probably are. So use your crystals, girl. Not for medical things. And I will get to my next point, which is as we wrap up, it is important to note that if your stress is impairing your ability to function and complete your everyday tasks, you might be suffering from clinical anxiety and should seek medical treatment. There is no shame in therapy or prescription medicine. None of the things I just talked about are supplements (laughs) for therapy or prescription medicine, but they can help you if you suffer from minor stress. Right. Like I do. Like everyone does. Yes. So, everyone does. So again, I am no doctor. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> what so, if some university was like, hey, we listened to all the night classy episodes and uh, we're going to give you an honorary doctorate. <laughs> what do you think yours would be in? Um, <laughs> yours would be like crystals. supernatural. <laughs> crystals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't mean to offend anyone. I, I think any way that reduces your stress is completely valid. And if it works for you, you should keep doing it. And that was my lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Haley, you know what makes me feel better when I'm stressed? What? Gifts and maybe a little alcohol. You know, that's pretty relatable. And I think you're in luck because we have ethyl ambrosia on our side. Have you heard of ethyl ambrosia? You know what? I have um, been there, ate it, love it. It's the best. Oh my gosh. Well, you're going to love this because I mean, obviously you love it because it's vegan. It's delicious. It's colorful and beautiful. It's yes. all about the aesthetics, but um, it's also really tasty. You don't have to get your fingers all dirty. And it is a vegan gel shot. Yes, it is a vegan gel (laughs) shot (laughs) with alcohol in it. (laughs) It is alcoholic. It's beautiful. It's it's all everything you need. All 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 at once. All the things. And we actually have some nice little codes for our listeners to use. We do for a little discount action. A little discount. Do you have a little little alcoholic gel shot? How do you like the sound of Bogo? Fifty percent off. You like that? I do like that because then I could buy a box of ethyl ambrosia for me. And get one 50% off to give to my teacher friend who is pulling her hair out right now because she's so stressed. Yeah, everyone knows a teacher. At this point in our lives, (laughs) there's a lot of us around. So help out a fellow teacher friend. Buy one, get one 50% off or... If you're going to skimp out on it and just get one for you or just give a gift, uh, give 15% off the box regardless with the code NIGHTCLASSY15. Yes, or NIGHTCLASSYBOGO for buy one, get one 50% off at ethylambrosia.com. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. All right, y'all. Welcome back tonight classy and it is my turn to teach my lesson as you all know we went back to school this week and we're doing kind of like school themes so mine my lesson here is kind of like a hodgepodge a collage if you will um school things Mm. is is the lesson school (laughs) things so I was just like what makes like what do I think of when I think of school and the first thing I thought of was apples and I was like why are like how did apples get to be associated with like teachers and schoolhouses? It's a good question. Like, is that like also something you think of? My assumption would be that like fruit used to be a special thing, so you'd give it as a gift to your teacher. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And there's there's a lot of stories. One version of like the origins of this say that in the 1700s, poor families in Denmark would pay for their children's education with apples. Mm. Now they don't have to pay for a tuition <laughs> at all in modern days. Or maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe apples are still a go and it's just like <laughs> the unwritten rule. <laughs> but in America, before the 1800s, there weren't really even any public schools at all. And so a lot of middle and upper class families would just hire someone in to educate their children or like send them off, mostly boys, to like private schools. But education is lit, as we all know. And the, you know, less 
privileged families, the lower class wanted in on this sweet deal. You know, knowledge is power. Why would you not want that? And so in lieu of paying their educators, families, um, especially those on the frontier, would just feed their children's teachers from their crops, Hmm. from their farms. And so oftentimes this was apples because... They can grow in a ton of yeah, different climates. That's what they had, uh, yeah. So that's that. They would give them as gifts and feed them. Have you ever had a kid literally give you an apple? <laughs> one time at lunch, one of my students was eating an apple and he took like four bites out of it and then shoved his like plastic spoon into it and was like, <laughs> look, Miss Madden, like it was like art to him. Like he was so proud. And like I personally, I. Uh, love when kids play like yeah. they learn through things like that but one of the other preschool teachers did not find it amusing <laughs> and she like put him in his place Aww. for like playing with his food and I was like okay maybe not in school they shouldn't play with their food maybe not ever I don't know I'm gonna let my kids play yeah, with their but food he was because, proud of it yeah, yeah it was really cute <laughs> so um kind of yeah. is my answer to that have you had any kids give you apples yeah my middle schoolers think it's funny to like literally <laughs> give me apples which is pretty funny <laughs> they're like haha you're a teacher yeah <laughs> <laughs> they like go get their school lunch and like don't eat the apple like they they don't want it and then they right. give it to me and it's this <laughs> hilarious joke which actually like it is pretty funny yeah it is kind of funny all they yeah. want is bosco sticks is what they really want what's Those, a bosco stick? the mozzarella sticks oh. with the marinara yeah that's what, that's all i want too like if they brought me that oh, i would yeah. not complain those are the days where i use my like i'll put money into my account to get the school lunch <laughs> really yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. And so that's what that's information I have about apples. Um, and there might be some more in it a little bit later. But it also got me questioning, like, why are so many teachers females? A lot of them are. And I have some stats on this. But men really dominated the teaching profession until the 1840s really? and 1850s. Yeah. And, you know, it's because females were, you know, so inept and unable to control a chaotic classroom they can't read they can't read they can't write they're just better in their place which is the home right and so i mean uh <laughs> if we're talking about this female right okay <laughs> me i would say i am better in the home we just got done talking all this stuff about how we how we're perfectly fine staying home doing nothing yeah no no i love my job teaching's great but like sitting at home doing nothing is also pretty That's great also good <laughs> right yeah not that not that women back then did nothing because they, they did, did a lot, lot of stuff yeah yeah <laughs> but really it wasn't even an option for them to become a teacher it, it looks much different these days because like 76 yeah uh, if we're going to use the gender binary, 76% of public school teachers were female in 2017 to 2018 school year. That's according, a whole lot. Yeah. And that's from the National Center for Education Statistics. So there was this like flip flop. So what happened was there was a big lack of teachers as immigration rates were going up, as well as birth rates in the late 1800s, mid 1800s. They needed more teachers. And they're like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe we should give women a try. Let's let's put them up to bat. They can maybe read. Yeah, they if, can maybe, if a man yeah. teaches them. Yeah, <laughs> they can stop being so hysterical. Yeah, yeah. just relax. <laughs> if they can stop looking at their crystals and taking their supplements. <laughs> yeah, why don't you go out in the yard and do your Wiccan bullshit and come back and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Alec, <laughs> he's gonna teach these hosts. Yeah, a Alec was so mad at me for that. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, now this next part here is a tale as old as time. So female teachers were paid significantly less than our male counterparts. Can you believe that shit? Shock. Yeah, the average that Go doesn't ahead. happen anymore. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> maybe not i mean as far as teaching goes a lot of districts just have a set base pay which is not based on gender no the right? base pay isn't but maybe the promotions are also yeah. i am not hinting at anything to my own school district just no wanna, not at all not at all that's not that's not sarcastic i'm <laughs> like, I don't want it to sound no, like No, I'm, I'm not yeah. either. Yeah, okay. we have a great district. Yeah. But I will say that we do have 
stats and data from the second half of the 19th century that says that the average female teacher received 40 to 60 percent of a male teacher's pay in the same holy situation. shit yeah but you know That's females fucked up you know a lot of them were like well 40 percent 40 percent imagine making 40 percent of we, what like we make now you would literally starve. Like I wouldn't be able to afford my rent on 40% of what I make now. Yeah. And you're, you'd have to eat the apples your kids gave you. Yeah. <laughs> you'd look forward to it. I wouldn't be able to just like wait until they go home and then throw them you'd away. You'd starve it down yeah. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it wouldn't be a desk ornament. It yeah. would be actual food. <laughs> yeah. You would like every time it would be like a, what's his name? Why can't I think of it? The dogs with the bells. Oh my gosh. Oh, Pavlov's dogs. Pavlov's dogs. <laughs> the yeah. dogs with the bells. <laughs> dogs and bells and apples and teachers. Fatty asses and dogs with bells. <laughs> you know what it's about here on Night Classy. Um, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. With female teachers earning significantly less, it was obviously more affordable for schools to employ them. And so we see this flip-flop imbalance from less males and way more females. And like I said, even present day, it's a significantly female-run field. Now, I didn't look up, well, I tried to look up how many, like the stats on how many teachers have a drinking problem, but they don't report on that. <laughs> But um, I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as females are entering into the teaching field, there was a major perk, even if it wasn't their wages and pay for females. One opportunity did arise, and that was the chance to travel. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about like, you know, go to South America, see beautiful sites and teach English for a year. I'm talking about like venturing out into the wild, wild west, like they're being recruited to go teach the kids on the frontier. Yeah. And so tons of female teachers are like, heck yeah, let's do it. Let's make education happen. Get me away from my fucking dad who wants to marry me to my neighbor. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly it. And they were escaping that situation, but also on the frontier. Basically, it was as if you were the first chick to arrive to a frat party. <laughs> you had all the options in the world and they all <laughs> wanted you to. They were yeah. way more single males than there were single females. Mm. So they were really a hot commodity. These yeah. young female teachers. And we see a lot of teacher training or they were called normal schools in quotation marks. They pop up all over the East Coast. And these are the precursors to many universities where teachers are getting their education okay probably from male educators right right but things were kind of popping for like our female teacher goddesses i on mean the frontier. it does sound lit <laughs> all kinds of things were popping besides <laughs> the fact that you have to live on the frontier <laughs> yeah and eat your eat just tons of apples apples their milk, teeth were clean as fuck the wheat <laughs> yeah not they not were hardy great. women yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they could make money and that was a lot more for them than just you know doing house chores and you know sitting around eating lots of apples <laughs> <laughs> and what i thought was interesting in this research is that this you know this pay was not always monetary and they were paid in apples because of the access to them but they would make hard apple cider as a Ooh. safer alternative to whatever could have been in the water those days. Oh, shit. And a badass side hustle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the very first, first moonshiner was someone yeah. just like us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyone, anyone want to buy some sink hooch? We've got it. We know how to make that. Yeah, it's very good. It, it's not good. <laughs> Video is on Patreon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we drank it. We we did we, it. We drank we did it. That. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Luckily, this was not the case for these lovely ladies on the frontier. And like I said before, it was lit for them. We are seeing a lot of opportunities for them. And so, you know, they can be teaching, they're starting their careers, and they end up finding, you know, a nice man to shack up with. But once they got married, they had to quit teaching legally yes, because of marriage bars. I didn't know that before this research. You knew that? Mm -hmm. Wow, you're so smart. I so can't believe smart. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the turnover was 
pretty quick, even back then for teachers. Yeah. Can you imagine like, like (laughs) firing like your only teacher because she got married and then you're like, well, shit, like we're on the frontier. We just have to like wait till another teacher drives through town. Yeah. What are we going to do now? Yeah. (laughs) They would, I don't know, band together. I mean, some classes have like three kids in them. Yeah. Not to mean that like they don't deserve education. Right. But it was just kind of like a a thing that the community had to rally around. People would step up to the challenge, especially in like rural communities. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult because they had to organize and implement these schools by themselves, even though it was still mandated by law that children had to attend school by then. So they did rally together. There would be like school raising events where they would literally raise the structures and build the school. And actually, can you imagine this? Teachers and children would come into the school on Saturdays to clean the school room, the schoolhouse. And it was like a bonding experience. Um, I can't imagine that because like we still do shit tons of work on the weekend. Right. But not with our kids. Not with the kids. Not but we the give kids. them homework. That's true. But, but yeah, it's not you're like right. Physically it is. cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> the school. That's true. <laughs> but like I, I'm still seeing a lot of parallels between then and now. Like schools weren't properly like funded and overseen. So the teachers and the students and the communities had to step up so much. There's still like school fundraisers and like teachers having to do so much extra. You're so right. I was shocked about, first of all, things that I thought were kind of better back then and the Mm -hmm. things that are still the same. And I pulled this quote from one of my sources, which I'll go over at the end. Classes were generally taught in 10 to 15 minute sessions, which like that would be great for young kids to sit in a 15 minute session and then be able to like apply their knowledge. And that was to each grade level. And they were focusing on the basics. So it's reading, spelling, penmanship, arithmetic, and history. Um, And so We have those things, but also back then learning was mostly just rote memorization, citation, and oral drilling. So that was not not great. (laughs) Not so great. (laughs) Education has come a long way. Don't get it twisted. We will say that. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's based (laughs) in things that are, um, you know, we need a little reform. It's far from perfect, but it is better much better yeah we don't whip our kids anymore there's no corporal punishment (laughs) well there is in some places right yeah not in our schools i'm pretty sure charter schools in tennessee are still allowed to do that yeah they can because we were Mm -hmm. at one yeah when we yep 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 so moving on not good not good um another thing that's not good is that the the lack of supplies is still there um a lot of schools didn't have pencils or slates chalkboards were a luxury item there were no toilets in a lot of cases the one teacher wrote down her experience of being like there's nowhere to go to the restroom and the guy I forget who he was in the community but he's like there's plenty of trees <laughs> yeah so this is why women did not have equal access to education <laughs> because it's harder for women it's to different. just go on It's trees. just different. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, textbooks were a thing back then, but that was also a luxury item. They were super expensive. And so families mm-hmm. would send their children to school with the only book they had. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. The Bible. But I mean, at least, you know, that's some literacy if they're able to read the Bible. Like it teaches you to read. Yeah. And you like, I feel like you memorize it in a lot of these communities as a young kid, you memorize passages and then that can help you learn to read. Yeah. I did the Mm -hmm. same thing like way before actually learning how to read. It was like, look, I can read this book and just like feeling the pride of being like, this is what it's like to read and like imagining it while you just like memorize what the words say. Yeah. But it's exciting as a little kid, you know? I have a fun frontier fact before we move on to the next segment. (laughs) Love a fun frontier fact. So our fun frontier fact is that in 2001, approximately 250 one-room schools remained in the United States. And 70 of them were in Montana. Montana? Yeah, Montana's like a hotspot for a lot of the like OG schools. And they were functioning as a one-room schoolhouse? Yes. Oh my God. Can you imagine? No, it'd be, I don't know if they had AC or what. It'd be so freaking hot. Now, I didn't delve like super deep into this, so I don't really know the circumstances. It's freaking cold. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) But like, I'm not even thinking about like temperature. Like imagine, like it's hard enough to teach one grade level. 
It's kind of funny how like, you know, old things or like things that were not popular could become chic. It's like the one schoolroom schoolhouse becomes like the Monta- Montessori, Montessori school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it would be. It's just actually. natural for kids to learn alongside their older siblings and they can teach each other. Yeah. The older kids very step new up world. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blah. So maybe that's what it was. Yeah. But though those are my Can't frontier facts and how we originated <laughs> uh, with apples and teachers. And so I have one last segment here. Okay. And the other thing that I thought of when I thought of schools besides teachers and apples was the Pledge of Allegiance. Something mm. that a lot of students and at one point were legally enforced to say at the beginning of every single school day. Also, did you know, I don't know if it's all of the United States or just Tennessee, but schools are required to have, I think it is, yeah, it's all of America. The national motto is in God we trust and every school has to post that. Yep. And that was switched over. I didn't include that in my lesson, but that was switched over because a part of the Pledge of Allegiance also was switched over to include, um, under God, mm-hmm. which was not in the original one. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute. So I'm going to start back to the beginning. Okay. okay. So the Pledge of Allegiance was written by this guy, Francis Bellamy. He's a Baptist minister, and it was written in 1892. Now, when it was written, it was not like ever something where they're like, every kid in America is going to say this. But it was published in Youth's Champion magazine as a way to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in North America. Great. So there's your first red flag. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear, I've heard several red flags. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all a red flag at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was a different time. Now, the Youth's Companion magazine was one of the most popular things in print at the time. And it was <laughs> high. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I'm a Vogue girl myself. It's like or instead, 17. Of, instead of WAP, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So fortunately, no, that's not our circumstance. But a lot of kids, um, it it was for them in 1892. (laughs) And they fucking loved it. Oh, my God. They loved it. (laughs) They were like, this is a bop. I don't know what a bop is, but (laughs) this is it. (laughs) I pledge allegiance to the flag. (laughs) Yeah, bring it down. (laughs) And so it gained popularity really fast fast. And this is also the whole reason this was published was because it's during a time of, again, super high immigration rates and a strong desire, especially amongst white males to ignite and rally nationalism in America. Why do white males fucking love nationalism? Can they chill the fuck out? Because they get power. They get power from their circumstance. If they make being American white male, they get power. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's how it goes. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the. I was just watching the waves on the editing. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, so they're igniting this like love for nationalism and they're starting it with the generation of the future by targeting kids with the Pledge of Allegiance. This fun bop, the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> and schools were able to buy the symbol of America, which is the flag, at cost from Youth's Companion and implement their new pledge right away. Now, the original Pledge of Allegiance reads, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, this pledge was originally accompanied by something called the Bellamy Salute. Have you heard of this? No. Girl, I can't believe this is not in our textbooks because this is crazy. I'm going to describe it for you. Okay. Your right hand is forward, slightly raised, with fingers extending straight out. Oh, girl, I know this. Why this sounds familiar? (laughs) (laughs) And that's what they did. For I a mean, long time. But this is in the 1800s. So this wasn't. Oh, no, no, no. It was not changed until 1942. <gasps> okay. Uh-huh. Okay. But World War II ended in 1945. So the, it ended with World War II with the Nazis. Right. 
but people were pissed because they didn't think that we should have to change our salute to the Pledge of Allegiance just because some other countries, some foreign countries had also adopted it and they were doing bad things. Why should we have to change our salute? Oh, my God. Right. Uh, you want to see some pictures of these kids? Sure. Okay. I mean, they look like Nazis. <laughs> Yeah, they do. (laughs) And so it wasn't just like, it's not like the U.S. originated this. (laughs) Neither did Nazi Germany or fascist Italy. It's actually um, goes back to like ancient Rome. But we quickly changed in 1942. The government was like, let's uh, let's, let's bring it down. Let's not do this anymore. (laughs) This is no longer cool. (laughs) Abort, abort. (laughs) And so that was changing as well as some of the language with the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, there's no religious language in the original. The line says, my flag, and it's not, it's also not like pledging directly to the United States yeah, of America. and the flag as if there's only one. Yeah. Like how weird is that? As if we know. You got to... I you, pledge allegiance to the flag. The only flag. Yeah, the only this important ever, flag. Which <laughs> is America. Or ever was. Yeah. So they had to clarify. The line has changed in 1923. To me, I kind of saw it. It's like, it's a reminder of like, who's your daddy? Like the, <laughs> the flag of America. Like say it. Right. I don't want to say it. (laughs) And I don't know about you, but (laughs) okay. I don't know. You kind of like it. (laughs) But when I think back to uh, being in elementary school and uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, one of our peers was from Canada. He was a Canadian citizen and he would sit for the Pledge of Allegiance. And like, I didn't really understand that. But like after talking to him, I kind of got it. But especially like as you get older, you kind of learn to think critically about what you're actually saying Mm -hmm. and what the pledge stands for. So it goes on. The next year after this line was changed in 1923, the Immigration Act of 1924 was passed and it put a kibosh on a lot of immigration to the states. And then President Eisenhower requested that the words under God be added not only does it need to be added to the Pledge of Allegiance, but it needs to be added between one nation and indivisible, Hmm. which literally divides the nation. Yeah. And there's a lot of outcry about this. So now it reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And there's a lot of hoopla about this. Yeah, You know, people are like, we love it. We hate it. And there's been legal happenings around it ever since the 1940 or yeah, there was a 1943 Supreme Court case, West Virginia versus Barnett, that ruled that students would no longer be required to stand and recite the pledge. Up until then, it was a requirement. But even past then, there's still been a lot of issues with that. In 2017, a student in Texas was expelled for not standing for the pledge. She, Imagine being that fucking petty that you'd expel a student over that. Yeah. Or that I you can't even imagine. say anything. I never Why made my say anything. I never like like they always say the pledge of allegiance over the announcements, but like I never even really acknowledged it. Like my students were sitting quietly. Some of them stood. Like it's not. It's a personal decision. It's a personal choice, right? And so this student, after getting expelled, sued the district. Yeah, as so they should. that's pretty cool. Yeah, did they get yeah. money? The school's response was basically that she um, she needed to get her parents' permission first to opt out, Why? and that was like written into law. Oh my god! Yeah, in twenty eighteen, and you know that very well. They didn't tell her. That she needed her parents' permission. of course, it's not like in the student handbook. They just sent her to the office. Yeah. Yeah. You're in trouble for not being a mindless pledger of allegiance like everyone else. Yeah. In 2018, a teacher in Colorado physically forced a student to stand for the pledge. He was charged with child abuse and uh, he just went with a plea deal and retired early from teaching oh my god and imagine all the kids he harmed before he like quote-unquote retired yeah how many more people came before this yeah and why do you like what kind of stress did that cause all of those students witnessing it also the one who Mm -hmm. had to experience that but why why is he so worked up 
yeah. about it. Like, why can't you just let it go? I think like a lot of teachers get into this headspace where like they need to control everything or they'll have no control. And maybe like that was standoff. just one of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one of those things. Now this next one is crazy. In 2019, a Florida student was arrested and charged with disrupting school function after refusing to stand for the pledge. And this student was black and she was basically, you know, kind of falling in Colin Kaepernick's yeah. shoes where she's like, you know, this, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this pledge of allegiance mm -hmm. and it's not truthful to what America does actually stand for. And so I'm yeah. um, peacefully protesting. And of course her teacher did not peacefully respond and, you know, she could have just let it go. But no, the student was arrested. Oh my God. Mm hmm. Now there have been also. I hate. I'm sorry. I. It's it, it's dis it's so disgusting. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like I knew that I always kind of felt icky standing up with everyone else and doing the same salute and saying like, the same thing. Just aside things. from that, like you can get arrested in school for something like that's I mean, not illegal. That's not illegal. Like. Unless you are like really truly going to like cause serious harm on someone else, there's no reason to arrest a child. Right. There needs to be better intervention yeah. before the police get called in for a student who doesn't want to stand, which is perfectly fine and legal for the pledge yeah. of allegiance. Like, I, it's crazy we even have to say that. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and there's this man, his, he's an attorney, father, and atheist in California. His last name is Newdow. And he has been involved with several court filings against the Pledge of Allegiance. When his daughter was three years old, he created a court case where he was basically saying that like he doesn't think that the Pledge of Allegiance should even be in schools. It should be something that people should do on their own personal time because it is religious. Can you imagine doing the Pledge of Allegiance on your own personal time? Some people do. That's, that's the show on TLC that's going to make them to yeah. the top. They're going to be like we're now calling all families that say the pledge together before everyone breaks for the day. Oh, what if you came home and I was like doing the Pledge of Allegiance in the living room? <laughs> that would be scary. Like, that, that could be, be really something scary. in a horror movie. Yeah, yeah, that would be horrifying. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird that it's normalized in school to have this, like, extreme patriotism. And even, like, in high school, like, I had German exchange students, and I'd take them to, like, professional soccer games, and they'd see them do the national anthem and, like, roll out the big flag carried by veterans in the beginning. And that's <laughs> fucking weird. Like, before sports games, we say, mm -hmm. we sing the national anthem. Imagine if I was like, listen to this. North Korea is forcing their students to all say the same Pledge of Allegiance to their flag while saluting it in some way or another, and it's been going yeah. on for over 100 years. You'd be like... Oh my God, we need to do something. Yeah. But it's like when you put the shoe on the other foot and kind of like look in the mirror, you're like, wow, that is weird. And it's a little creepy. People have spoken out about this. Like this guy, Newdow, that I was talking about before, he has filed several times and gotten other parents involved, but the the court threw out his case because he didn't have the right stance because he only had cust like partial custody of his daughter and not full. And so for that reason, they would not even consider this. At oh all. my God. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, just memorizing and reciting these words at the beginning of every day. And I also think it creates kind of like a bad and awkward environment for those who do want to stand up against this or speak out about what they think is wrong about it. Like if we're supposed to be a secular nation, why is our pledge of allegiance talking about God? Yeah. So I personally believe we need more critical thinking around the pledge of allegiance, really do your own research. There's, you know, more details that you can go into. It boasts about liberty and justice for all. We have yet to see that in yeah. America. I, I would I would love to. I tried to be a part of it, but right now it's just an aspiration. So I hope this lesson got the wheels turning <laughs> for you all. And if you enjoyed it, 
send me an apple. Oh my God. <laughs> Haley, yeah. I always feel like your lessons get me so fired up. <laughs> I'm like ready to punch a wall I right know. now. <laughs> now you need to like teach me about how to de-stress again. This yeah. is what I'm talking about. We should have done our lessons in reverse. <laughs> we should have. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to vote for us for Best Podcast in Memphis. Link is in the show notes. Also, if you want to support us, you can shout us out on social media, mention us to a friend, or use our promo codes with any of our sponsors. Thank you so much. And three, two, one, class, class dismissed. dismissed.